I'll show you how to merge multiple exposures into an HDR image using Affinity Photo. I've got some JPEGs here, which were obtained with in-camera exposure bracketing, and I'll use these for my first example. Within Affinity Photo, I'll go to File, New HDR Merge. Then I'll choose Add on the dialog, browse to those JPEG files, select them all, and click open. Now, because I'm merging out of camera JPEGs, noise reduction will have already been applied. So I can disable the noise reduction option here. However, if you are merging raw files, it's best to leave this enabled. For handheld bracketed shots, it's a good idea to leave automatically aligned images enabled as well. Then I'll click OK. Affinity Photo will then run through the HDR merging process. This involves equalizing the exposures of all the images. Then the cleanest and most detailed pixels are chosen from the range of images and merged together to create a final document with more dynamic range. We are then taken directly into the Tone Mapping Persona or Workspace, which lets us choose how to compress this extended dynamic range into a result that can be displayed on a standard dynamic range monitor. Over on the right, there are various sliders to control the tone mapping result. Tone compression controls how much the tones are compressed to fit into standard dynamic range. Local contrast is an alternative method of tone mapping that enhances local contrast between pixels. Rather than setting one slider to 100%, using a combination of both sliders can sometimes be a good approach for a more balanced result. With this image, however, I'll show you how to use some of these other options. I'll reduce local contrast almost completely and bring tone compression back up to 100%. Now, I'll enable shadows and highlights, then bring the highlights slider down. Currently, there isn't enough contrast in the foreground. So to address this, I'll enable the curves graph down here, and I'll create a basic S-curve shape. Then I'll add another node in the shadow tone region and bring it down to flatten out the overall contrast. Further to this, I might also reduce the saturation slightly to bring down the color intensity. Now before moving on, I will also point out the various presets available on the presets panel. The default category contains a small set of useful starting points for further development. I can click one to apply it. There are some additional presets available in the other categories that you can experiment with as well. I can still get back to my custom tone mapping settings by simply using undo, which is Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows. I'll undo until I reach the step before applying the black and white preset, and I might save my own preset. So on the panel options, I'll create a new category. This defaults to the name Presets, so I'll switch across to it, then choose Rename Category, and I might call this Landscapes. Then I can choose Add Preset, and save this as Soft Sunset. Now I can reapply this to future imagery. Once I'm happy with my tone mapping settings, I can click Apply. This commits the tone mapping and moves back to the photo persona for further editing. I can now work non-destructively with layers. So I could, for example, add a brightness contrast adjustment, then increase both sliders for a punchier result. Now, you may wish to apply your own tone mapping method instead of using the tone mapping persona. I'll show you an example of this using a set of images taken in Anglesey of the South Stack Lighthouse during sunset. I've actually pre-processed these to TIFF files. But again, you can merge with any valid bitmap format and RAW files if you so choose. I'll disable noise reduction, and this time I'll also disable tone map HDR image. This will align and merge the images, but will not enter the tone mapping persona. I end up in the main photo persona instead, with the clone brush tool selected, which is for retouching of ghosts or moving areas. I don't need to do any retouching, however, so I'll use H 
to switch to the view tool, and now I'll begin manually tone mapping this image. Before doing so, I do need to point out that if you have an Apple device with extended dynamic range support, or you have HDR compositing enabled through Windows, you may actually be seeing a genuine high dynamic range representation of your image at this point. This can be confusing because it is not an accurate representation of the image once it is exported to a bounded standard dynamic range format, such as JPEG. In order to double check this, you can go to Window, 32-bit preview. If Enable EDR or Enable HDR is checked, you may be seeing the high dynamic range values. Unchecking this will no longer display those values and give you an idea of how the image will currently look when exported to a standard dynamic range format. So now I need to tone map this image. First, I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Shadows, Highlights. This applies a live, non-destructive version of this filter. I'll reduce Highlights Strength to minus 100 and I'll increase Highlights Range slightly. Now, in addition to this, I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Exposure. Then bring the Exposure slider down. This will really help to reveal the bright highlight detail, but the entire image is lacking in contrast. So, I'll add a Brightness Contrast Adjustment, bring the contrast all the way up, and gradually raise the brightness until the result looks suitably impressive. And now I can carry on with layer-based editing to further retouch this image before exporting it using the standard File Export workflow. So there we go. That was a look at HDR merging in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.